Hey everyone, welcome back to another Daily Tribe video. My name is Travis and I wanted to bring you the quick Iron Man highlights and recap from Iron Man Israel as unfortunately we weren't able to see anything live in what was a fantastic race full of some really strong competitors who had some amazing performances. And also on the other side, we had some guys who didn't perform quite as well as we would have hoped. Without further ado, let's break down the race, see how it unfolded, and also let's take a look at what was the most amazing Ironman run of all time by Patrick Langa. Thanks for tuning in. All right, let's start with the swim. And as you can see, surprisingly, Daniel Bakigard and Florian Angard did not lead the swim, despite usually always being up the front. Instead, Andre Salvesberg, who ended up DNFing, and Mignon Coolhouse led the way, putting in a huge surge at the beginning. To add to that, Florian Angard said he had one of the worst swim starts he's ever had. So this clearly ended up favoring the likes of Patrick Langa, Mickey Tagholt, and Dennis Chevreau, who usually can't quite keep up with the likes of Daniel and Florian. One man who wasn't getting any help from this swim start was Sebastian Keenley, who was suffering worse than he could have ever hoped, having a dreadful swim coming seven minutes back from the lead and over five minutes back on Patrick, swimming 54 minutes total. Then onto the bike and everything really shook up out of transition as Bakagard was a man on a mission and went directly to the front with a large group that included two names you'll see here again, Patrick Langa and Gregory Barnaby. By 45 kilometers, they had over three minutes on the chase group and four minutes on Keenlay's group. By halfway, the front three really put their foot on the gas and opened up a gap of a minute 30 to Patrick Langa and continued putting time into them all the way into T2. Robert Callan was really the charger here at the front and eventually he broke from back of guard and anchor with only Daniel managing to stay fairly close. Callan had the fastest bike split at four hours and seven minutes, Bakagard having the second fastest just a couple of minutes behind him. Keenley had the third fastest, which put him now in seventh place, eight minutes and 15 seconds back. Patrick was just ahead of him in fourth before starting on the run. And that's where the Langa show really began. What unfolded next was truly remarkable. At first, a man you might not have heard of him, Gregory Barnaby, stayed with him all the way up until about 26 kilometers when he couldn't hold on to the blistering pace Patrick had set. But what this did for them was move them all the way up until 30 seconds of Daniel Backergaard. Remember, they were eight minutes back from the front at T2 and Backergaard was also running really well. Langa ran to the front and just didn't look back as he quickly put time into Daniel Backergaard, finishing over one minute and 40 seconds ahead of him with a 7.42 overall, a two hour 30 marathon. It was absolutely phenomenal. Backergaard ran a 2.37 and somehow that wasn't good enough. Barnaby put himself on the Ironman map with his phenomenal performance for third place, running a 2.35 marathon of his own. Definitely one to look for in the future. Angard ended up in seventh after just holding on at times on the bike and run, and Keenlay finished in 12th, clearly having an off day and making him think about starting the retirement maybe a little bit early. What an incredible race that I really wish Iron Man had streamed so we could have watched it. Let me know if you appreciate these kind of videos going forward so we can get some coverage on the races we can't watch. Unfortunately, I don't have time to do the women's race, but Ruth Assel won over there in what was also another good race and a great performance for her. All right, let's take a look at Patrick Langa's run, which was really jaw dropping. The fastest ever Iron Man run by some margin. The only run that ever came close to it was Christian Blumenfeld's at sub seven, but that was a completely different circumstance. When we look closer here at Patrick Langer's run, we see that the pace he held was five minute 48 per mile, and the course might have just been a little short, but some sources saying about 300 meters or so, so not that significant. The course wasn't necessarily that easy either with almost a thousand feet of elevation, and it was quite a rainy day. We see his pace was hot right from the get-go, indicating that Langa might well have known that a 2.30 marathon was well within his reach. He slightly faded towards the end, but only a little with a 6.09 last mile, and you have to wonder if he was challenged whether he could have ran a 2.29. He ran an Adidas Adi Zero Prime X's with an average cadence of 177. 
Patrick Lange just truly raised the game for Ironman running. The Kona slots from this race went to Bakkegaard, Barnaby, and Chevro, which will nicely free up their season for next year. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.